Riley, welcome to the Group X podcast. Hi. So good to see you. So good to see you. I'm so glad you said yes when I reached out as well. You and I don't know each other from a bar of soap, but I'll just let all listeners know, Haley and I have never actually <laughs> met face to face. I think I've seen you across the room at events, but I'm genuinely excited to find out who you are and find out how you got into fitness and what you do. So if you don't mind, let's kick it off right from the start. How'd you get into fitness? Um, High school, actually. Um, my phys ed class, when I was like 14, um, we had like a school excursion to a gym and I think we did two group fitness classes like over two weeks and um, I think we did like body combat one week and then we did body pump um, the week after that and that is kind of where I fell That's, in love with group fitness. I love it. What was um, it? Can you remember what it was that really I, grabbed you? I'd, I'd been dancing since I was six so okay. kind of just that movement to music and that ability just to find that expression yep. in a room full of people was always a really big draw card yep. for me and it's just kind of it felt familiar yep. in a different way awesome i love it um but yes i remember i'm um, asking my mum for a gym membership that year just so i could Brilliant. start group fitness yeah and uh yes small town and so i think all we had was like pub and step and i think like one body combat class a week um so it all kind of started from there so you're based in perth right sorry you're based in perth Based in Perth, but grew up in Bunbury, which oh. is kind of just sort of an hour and a half, two hours south. South, of Perth. okay. So, really, I've been to Bunbury. I've been when I was the uh, the account manager for Les Mills, um, looking after WA. I travelled around and got to know see a lot of the area. So, Bunbury to me is is quite familiar down that way. Um, when you say sort of small town yeah. and, and not many gyms, that kind of stuff around, what gym was it that you were part of? Uh, Southwest Sports Centre. Okay. Yep which is still there now and yeah. still kind of the main gym for Bunbury. Yep. Um, I think some of the, like the outskirts, kind of the outer gyms, um, they're still out there now and still pumping out group fitness. But I think, yeah, Southwest Sports Centre was the main one Yeah. at the time when I was, yeah, growing up there. So mum said, yes, you could have a gym membership? She did. Love her. Thanks, mum. <laughs> so I remember I used to just do um, like step and pump every Saturday morning. Awesome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Whenever I'd be like on school holidays and I would um, be like, yes, I can get to do a body attack class or a balance class. Um, but, yes, I was always the Saturday regular, definitely, just whilst, it's, whilst at school. Yeah, love it. So well, how did you then get into teaching? How does – I mean, I know that's – you said that was around the age of 14. When did you teach your first class and how did yeah. that – how did you progress into teaching? How did that all happen for you? Um, well, it was – Pretty much when I stopped dance. Um, so once I finished high school, um, I stopped dance at the same time, moved to Perth um, to start uni. And I think I lasted a day without a gym membership <laughs> <laughs> and immediately um, yeah, found a gym. Um, and kind of I just had really, really good instructors that noticed me in class. Yeah. And, you know, the they kind of spot you in class and go, oh, I should be an instructor. And that was kind of like, yes, that's actually something that would be really, really cool. Yeah. Um, so I think I was about 19 when I did my first initial training yep. and have been teaching since. What was the program you did your first training on? Started with balance. Awesome. Yep. So that was uh, 2010. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> At least 50, actually. Um, yeah. Awesome. Cool. So it's, uh, yes, <laughs> I just revealed my age, but yes, yep. started teaching in 2010, um, body balance release 50. So and that how was, was where it all started. From how me. was that training module? Cast your mind back. You haven't come from, from the fitness industry. You've been, had a dance background. That would be familiar, but going into initial module training for you, how was that? It was a really cool thing. Um, I think it was one of the first times I've ever entered into something without high expectations of myself and without the pressure of needing to be perfect straight away. I think it was one of the first times where I've walked into something with just complete permission to be really, really shit at something um, <laughs> because I knew I had the ability to <laughs> It's a really freeing feeling. Yes. Um, but I knew I could pick up choreography and I had enough body awareness to uh, 
know that I could get through with technique, but just the thought of coaching freaked me the fuck out. Yep. And yep. just um, it was scary, but I kind of, I cried many times um, over those three days. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> you know what? Good on you though for sticking I it. I kind out. of walked away from it going, I Yeah. <laughs> I still remember leaving like the very first night. I think I like left my shoe behind. I just cried for hours when I got home because I was so exhausted. <laughs> now on that, on, on the exhausted bit you just said there, you, you told me just before that you suffer from chronic fatigue. Yeah. Is is it something you're happy to talk about? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Give us for those um, that for those that you want me to start. No, look. <laughs> if let me ask you some questions to try and get my understanding on what it is, and then as I'm sure that there'll be listeners that will engage and, and understand and appreciate that as well. So, give us a, a, an example. Give yeah. us a, a definition if you can on what chronic fatigue syndrome is. Um. So for me, it's kind of. Fatigue on both a physical and mental level. Um, so the physical fatigue is kind of what you'd expect, like just being, feeling like you're just completely run down all the time, except that it comes from like just really stupid stuff. Like taking a shower can be just the hardest thing in the world to do or just doing like grocery shopping leaves you just fatigued for days and days and days after it. Um, so that's kind of like the physical side and then there's just the mental exhaustion and fatigue that you get as well yeah. where just the ability to concentrate or to make decisions or to focus on something you kind of just lose that and yeah I think the mental fatigue probably the thing that hits the hardest yep. because you just can't focus on anything or stay connected to something or even just listening to conversations gets exhausting from having just to stay present while yeah. someone else is talking. Yeah. So um, it's kind of those two things combined. So how is it yeah, for great. for teaching group X classes then? You, you, is it a challenge? Is it a struggle? When I'm in the middle of a flare, it is, because the last thing I want to do is go to a class and look like I feel the way that I feel yeah. <laughs> I guess is probably the best way to put it yeah um and so the days where I can't hide it is usually the days where I'll get things covered and like take a big step back yeah but for the most part because I've been doing this for 13 years or so now um on the days where it is really hard a lot of it can be the switch to autopilot yeah like you kind of you know how to coach you know how to move you know the choreography so all of that stuff kind of there and it's not as much as it's a big physical effort and a big physical toll when you teach classes a lot of that mental side of it can sort of be pushed aside a little bit yep. and only having to teach for you know 30 minutes or an hour is actually a really good upside to being in this industry and having this sort of job is that I might only have to work for 30 minutes a day or yeah. for 45 minutes. And yeah. that's easier to get through than if I was sitting at a desk in an office for four to eight hours a day. Of course. What programs do you teach? Um, so teaching balance, jam. Now I can't even remember what I'm teaching. <laughs> balance, jam and core. Yep. Um, and then I've kind of just come out of uh, pub retirement and I'm back in that again and sprint. Okay, so pump. Sorry, not pump. You said balance, jam, and core. The three, the three main programs that you're teaching. Do you find that balance helps? Yeah. No, I find balance harder, to be honest, because you just it's it's that mental presence, and I think okay. that program, yep. um, more than any other program, and it will just requires and relies so heavily upon that connection and just being. So in the moment so that you know when space is appropriate in that program, yeah. I actually find I give so much more of myself in a balanced class that I can actually find sometimes balance is probably more exhausting than saying doing core or something like that. Yeah. What's new in fitness? The Australian fitness industry news and commercial gym equipment suppliers website 
designed to provide fitness industry professionals with knowledge and information to make better informed business decisions. I, I was going to say that that, that was a, the thing that was in my mind then was going to be saying that you, if, if it's a challenge, then you must be exhausted, obviously by the end of quarterly workshops it must really take it out of yeah. you because you've got to be on, you've got to be on present, you've got to know it all, you've got to be there 100% of the, the yeah, you've got to give 100% of the whole the Yeah, whole the come down room. after workshops is pretty, uh, pretty spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> is it? I can expect that the Monday after I'm not a functional human. Yeah, yeah. Do you do much interstate travel for quarterly workshops or, or primarily just in Perth? Um, primarily just in Perth ever since uh, COVID. So prior to yep. like the pandemic and everything, um, I was pretty much traveling every quarter. Yep. Um, but I've pretty much just been Perth-based uh, since we've come back and had to have live workshops again, which has been really nice, actually. Yep. Um, mainly just from the perspective of actually being able to spend more of my workshops in Perth. Yeah. I think it was a period of time where I was maybe only getting two Perth workshops a year. And so having that, consistency with just the Perth people where yeah. they're your peeps. Yeah. They're fun. And it's just familiar faces and it's always the best time when you're in your home state and, you know, with the people that you know the most. So, yeah, um, yeah I've actually really been enjoying having a lot of Perth workshops lately. Awesome. I, I'm going to cast your mind back to Les Mills Live in Melbourne around this time last year. Yep. Yeah. There are some absolutely amazing photos of you up on stage teaching when you are, you know, I like to work to use the word 1000%. So I'm going to say 1000% <laughs> in the moment. Yeah. And everybody in that yeah. room is on that journey and they're with you. How do you feel in those moments when, when it's all coming together and you've got it all happening? What, what, what's going through your mind and what, what are you feeling in those moments? I think um, just so much gratitude. Um, now I'm getting emotional. <laughs> <laughs> We're allowed to get emotional here. You're amongst um, friends and everybody, everybody in our industry loves you and understands you. So, yeah, be you. Be you. Yeah, it's, it's just the most, what I've always been drawn to within group fitness and within teaching is that the communities that we create and this ability to create a space where everyone feels like they belong and they feel like they're a part of something and so to be able to create those kinds of spaces it's just one of the most I think special things for me and just every class I walk away just heart bursting and just full of absolute gratitude and just love for everyone being who they are in those moments and being at, being willing enough to open themselves up and to feeling things and to expressing things and yeah yeah <laughs> how did the opportunity come up for you then to be part of the the trainer presenter team um it was i became came a presenter for core first actually um and i was covering a class quite regularly for uh, Jeff Richards, who was the core and the balance presenter at the time. And he was kind of noticing that he was getting feedback from his members when I would cover his classes. And kind of he helped sort of just open up those channels and introduce me to the right people to start getting feedback on my teaching and kind of just, yeah, slipped into the core team first. And then I think I was on the balance probably at the quarter after that. Was it always something that you had aspired to do, to be trainer and presenter, or was it just a, a tap on the shoulder opportunity to go, hey, have you thought about this? I think it was more one of those things where I didn't necessarily aspire to it, but it just felt like the natural next step, like that was just what was going to happen, and I didn't really think about when that was going to happen or how that was going to happen. It was just... It was going to be there at some point in the future, and I don't know. It just felt like it was one of those things that was just naturally going to be there. And yep. yeah, I just, I don't know. It just kind of all happened, and I was just really, really grateful that it all did happen. Yeah. Was it was it a challenge to get through and get onto the team 
not not a not a challenge as in from those at Les Mills head office, you know, scrutinizing or anything, but for you personally, was it was it a big challenge for you to be able to dealing with what you deal with it on a daily basis to be able to put it all together? Um, I actually got on the team before I was diagnosed. Okay. Um, so it all kind of happened within the first year that I was presenting. So I kind of, I got on the core team and I hadn't fallen sick at that point. And between me getting on the team for core and then auditioning for balance, I think I got started to get a diagnosis at that point. So yep. it all kind of happened at the same point. Yep. Um, but I look back on what I was capable of eight years ago to how much I've regressed in my illness to where I am now and so I was capable of so much more and being able to juggle so much more then than I am now yeah um so it wasn't a huge factor at that time so with the are you a trainer and presenter yes um so trainer and presenter for core and for balance yep. and then for jam just presenter okay and training Versus just presenting. Obviously, training, you are on. You're on all weekend. You are on the full two yeah. days, whether whether it's online module or whether it's face-to-face module that you're doing. How do you cope with that? How do you prepare for something like that? It's a big part of just sort of uh, pulling back in the lead up to it. Uh, so that way I've given myself the best opportunity to be completely present and not sacrifice any of their time uh, for my own health at that point and then just giving myself the time after modules that I know that I'm going to need to sort of recover and get back into things slowly again. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I, taking modules. That, sorry, you guys. <laughs> no, I was going to say, I'll take my hat off to you because I, I've, I, yeah, I don't, I, luckily enough, I, I don't suffer from anything like that and I can only imagine what it is to go through something like that every day to actually have that, that challenge that you, you're faced with every day. So my, my hat's off to you for, for yeah. saying, do you know what, well done for what you do um, and, and approaching that and how you approach it as well. You know, as I said from the beginning, I, I, I don't know you. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't know yeah. any of this until we, we started chatting, you know, half an hour or so ago. Um, so I appreciate you actually sharing that, that with us as well because I know it can be confronting. But I think the the yeah. why I sort of wanted to go into it with you as well is I think there's probably other – there's more instructors out there that may be going through something similar um, and to be able to share and for them to actually appreciate and understand that there's somebody else out there going through it is um, is a big thing. You know, there's there's it's a challenge but you can, you can do it and you can be successful with what you're yeah. doing. And I think the biggest thing is that it comes back to prioritizing the things that you actually really want to do and the things that do bring you joy and fill you up um, as much as possible. And so for me, teaching group fitness and still being a part of group fitness and, you know, workshops and modules and all that kind of thing, that's still been my priority. So it's yeah. okay to let go if that isn't your priority and if those things are only just taking more energy than it's actually giving back yeah. um you kind of you learn to let those go as hard as that is particularly when certain things have been a part of your life for so long and having to continually shape who you think you are and let go of the person that you were you know a day ago a week ago a year ago because things are constantly going to keep shifting and changing yeah I can, uh, yeah, you know, as I said again, hats off. I, I can only imagine what you what you have to go through with that kind of stuff. But, but well done for doing what you do. Yeah. Now I want to I want to ask you a question that, and it's probably going to be a really weird question, and then there's probably going to be some people going, "Dude, why the fuck are you asking that question?" But I'm going to ask, what one word describes you? Oh, don't do this to me. I have done. I have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's just go with awkward because I don't know. <laughs> well, okay. Let, let, well, let's delve into that. Why do you? Why would you say awkward? I don't. We've been chatting for say half an hour or so now. I don't think you're an awkward human whatsoever. And I'm not just saying that to be nice. I'm not just saying that because you're there and I can see you in a video. Yeah. I I I I, I want to try and understand why you why you would say awkward with that because I I think you're far from it. 
I think you're a very intelligent, very approachable person. That is, you know who you are. You know your stuff. It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> she's paying me to say this, people. She's like, no, she's not. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I, I'll be honest with you. Everything you've just said, though, you you understand who you are. You understand what you're going through. Yeah, yeah, it's a challenge, one hundred percent a challenge. But I, I honestly think you know who you are, and I don't think you're awkward at all. To, and I'll say it because I've, when I've seen those moments when you're up on stage, and you control that room, you have one hundred percent control of those guys and girls that are in front of you. I don't think you're awkward. I think we could come yeah, up with I'm a different fine word. But I'm on stage because stage is like just this safe place where. You've got things in your control and you know how to handle that. And then when I'm just in everyday life situations, I don't know how to be normal and it just gets weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, but I can't agree with you on that one at all. You and I haven't met each other and none of this conversation has been awkward yet. It's been free-flowing and a... I mean, you already know I've been clicking a pen for the last <laughs> 30 minutes. <laughs> hey, I told you about the Allen key that's in my hand. Yeah, I told you about that. <laughs> Maybe that maybe what it is is maybe we're both just awkward and it's just yeah, it's free flowing. So maybe it's not it's just, just normal you. for both of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I love. I don't think you're awkward at all. I think you are a a a switched on human that is dealing with what you what life's thrown at you. Yeah, you're getting through. You're doing what you've got to do. Yeah, every day is a challenge, but I, you're, you're on top of it. You know how to deal with with what's happening, but as you said, you're adapting to the changes that happen every single day. The you now, as you said, is different to the you that was two weeks ago. Yep. Yeah, you know how to deal with the way you need to be after workshops. You know you need to give yourself that space, and you need you know you need to to do what you do after workshops, and also leading up to workshops as well. You know, you you as you alluded to, you can't be full time smashing it. You know like some of us do did five or six classes a day. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I've got to do one or two. Or, or we've whatever. all been there and we've yeah. all done that oh. and we've all learned that the hard way. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. But no, Matt, look, you know, I, I, I um, yeah, I, I would choose a different word. I would choose a different word for you. You can choose whichever word you want, but I would choose, yeah, well, I would I'm choose a different word. with awkward. I've chosen that. Yeah. <laughs> We'll roll with it then. We'll roll with it. The word is stubborn. I'm not changing. <laughs> this is the Group X Podcast. So if there's, if there's one thing that you love the most out of our industry and what you do, what would it be? Um, as much as I'm introverted and awkward, um, the people. <laughs> Um, I think what I was going back to what I was saying before is just this ab ability to create a really safe space within that 30 minutes or within that hour that you're teaching a class and just providing that space for people to be themselves and to feel really good about being themselves. Yep. Um, that's just the most beautiful thing I think about the thing that we get to do. So talk to me about training then. When you're actually doing a module training and you've got, you know, 5, 10, 15 people, however many people are in, in front of you and with you, what's the, the main thing you try and get across to those guys, no matter what module training it is? But just what is, what is – is can you give us one thing that you try and get people to walk away from module training in understanding? Um, that it's okay to be yourself as a teacher and to just stop trying to replicate the people that inspired them as instructors and to replicate the people in the masterclass, but to walk away going the best person that you can be on stage is just 100% yourself. And the people that vibe with you will come to your classes because of that. And um, so if anything, like particularly with balance, the number of people that sort of come in and they're not calm enough or they're not flexible enough, I'm like, that's 90% of your members as well um, yep. that walk into the room not feeling flexible enough or don't feel like they're calm enough to be in that room and they're going to relate to that energy so much and you've already got this natural point of connection for so many people in the room because of that. Um, so, yes, being able to just understand that sometimes our flaws as instructors are also our greatest strength as well. So wow. if I can get that across 
than a lot of our modules is, yeah. uh, yes, yeah, own all the things that make us who we are because that's, that's what people love. Are you sure you want to use that word awkward still? Because <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm going to... the other 90% of the modules made us go, oh, Mark, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I, you know, what you've just come out with then is, I think, what, what every instructor wants to come away from module training, learning and understanding. You know, that the, you go to module training to learn. You don't go to module training to walk out of there being a masterclass presenter in front of thousands. Yeah. There's that word again of people. Yeah. You, you go to training to learn. You learn the basics. You learn the skills to be able to go back to your class and deliver. But if you're not 100% you and you're not being real, then it's not going to gel. You're not going to find your vibe, as you said, your crew, your people. You know, you're, you're going to be in there and you're going to be struggling yeah. every single day. It's when, I think when, as instructors, when we become 100% comfortable in ourselves is when the best teaching and the best experience comes out, not only for yourself, but for your members yeah, as well. Yeah. And also recognising that when you're first out as an instructor, you're not going to feel like yourself for probably not the first six to 12 months yeah. because you're still learning how to speak and say things and remember choreography and you're still trying to get all of those things down. And so it's going to feel really unnatural and really, really awkward for yeah, probably that first year of teaching, but once that sort of settles in, um, you really start to find who you are and not to put pressure on yourself to get to that point of just where it feels easy. Um, it will happen. It's just it's going to take time to get there. Yeah. Look, I, I, I think every single instructor that I've spoken to, especially the trainers and presenters that I've had on the show here, everyone's gone through that moment. You know, they're, they've done training or, that you know, they've been, been out there for a couple of years and they are oh, got to be like such and such because they get a lot of people to their classes or I really want to be like that person on the masterclass filming. It's not until they all sort of realise that just be you, that it all falls yeah. into place. Then the opportunities come flooding through because people can see the uniqueness and the real authentic, I hate that word, but I there I am using it, the, the authentic <laughs> person that, that is in front of them when you just, it all falls into place. Yeah, if we stop trying yeah. so hard to be something we're not, and we just be what we are, is when I think it all it all just falls in. Can you remember? Can you remember the class that it happened for you, where it all just fell into place, and you're like, "There it is." Was it? Was it a standout moment? There really wasn't a moment, but I think it was around about probably the twelve month mark for me, yeah. and I think that was the point where I knew it was the right time for me to step into another program was I finally felt like I'd found my feet in balance at that time and kind of felt like I was being myself and I knew who I was an instructor in that program. And so I felt like then I had that space then to step into another program after that. Yeah. yeah. All right. So which we said, you let's go back over again. You said balance core jam. Now they're three quite different programs. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but they scratch different itches in my brain, and so I need them all in my life. <laughs> no, look, I, know, I I love that. I love understanding that because it shows you as a person too, yeah? You're not just the, the and I, I don't mean disrespect when I say this, but you're not a one-dimensional person that just goes, oh, no, no, I can only do this. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing yeah. I can do. To have the, yeah, you've got balance, you've got the mind-body side of things, you've got core, which is the inner strength, and you've got your dance and your flair, your, your your personality that shines through. I would say, tell me if I'm wrong, but would you, you teach all of those three programs, you sit in the essence of each of those programs, but you teach them quite differently because you can. Yeah. 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 I get different things from each of my programs. And um, so, yeah, I get to step into that different side of myself within each of those programs. Um, so when I'm in balance, I kind of just get to be that, really present, really caring, really supportive side of myself where core I get to be a little bit more fun and then a little bit more sciencey, a little bit more education-y and get to really like coach into like benefits and things like that. And then jam, it's just again creating that feeling of community and letting go and stepping into that sort of space of self-expression as well. Have you got a favourite? 
No, because it's the same thing. It's scratching different itches. So, uh, <laughs> no, look, and that's, that yeah. makes that makes They're 100% all, um, sense. It does. It makes 100% yeah. sense because you're getting something out of each. And I think that's, you know, I ask that question as a bit of as tongue-in-cheek to, to, to everybody that comes on, just sort of go, oh, you know, you're doing this, but surely you've got a favourite, you know. we. I've got two dogs. I can't have a favourite. I've got a daughter. She's only one daughter, but I, I can't have a favourite in anything. I love everything that I do and everything that's around. But I And I love the fact that they, the three programs that are your main programs that you train and present in, as you said, scratch an itch, tick a box for each one yeah. of you, you're doing as well. And I think that's, that's again, where you find that uniqueness um, to be able to go, yeah, cool, I'm doing this because I'm not doing it because, oh, yeah, okay, it was an opportunity to come. Yeah, I'll go and do that. You're doing it because it actually means something to you. There's something in it that you actually yeah. gel with 100%. I think the time that we spend, spend like, learning these programs and protecting these programs and, you know, doing all that sort of stuff, again, you kind of need to have that love there because yeah. you need something to motivate and to give you the passion to do what we do because um, there's a lot of effort that always goes on behind the scenes. What's new in fitness? The Australian fitness industry news and commercial gym equipment suppliers website designed to provide fitness industry professionals with knowledge and information to make better informed business decisions. Now, can we talk about jam for a second? Now, I, I asked this question and, and more so for the fact that I've never done jam. Yep, I know what jam is. When I was working at Les Mills, sold the program, I've seen it done. I've just never experienced it as a program to go and do something in. Now, come to my class and then you'll understand why I say awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, I find, I'm going to say rubbish, absolute <laughs> rubbish. There's no chance in hell that you would be awkward. I think it is just you, I was going to say, letting your hair down. But, you know, that's the same as me letting my hair down here. But no, I think it's. Yeah. <laughs> I tightened the ponytail up before we started, remember? But no, I, I think that give me an understanding on jam as a program for you. Yeah. What do you get out of jam when you teach? It's just that feeling of being able to find full expression. I think um, you have this music that's just so incredible and so amazing. And then when you've got choreography that allows you to just feel that music even more and to just dance as hard as you can and feel absolutely amazing you kind of you're not thinking you get to be whoever you want to be in that moment in that room and there's no judgment it's just absolute freedom and it's a really really beautiful thing so when they say dance like no one's watching you, you they mean it yeah 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 See, yeah. that's, that's... I mean, the minute you start dancing like someone else is watching you, that's when it just feels awkward and it feels uncomfortable and you feel like, um, But, yeah, that, that ability to trust yourself and actually dance the way that you want to dance and not hold back your facial expressions or hold back just the flailing limbs that aren't quite going where you want them to go. <laughs> So that's okay. Now I'm seeing understanding. You're painting a picture in my mind about awkwardness, but even though I don't think you'd be awkward up on stage, I think you'd have you'd have all of it going on together, and there wouldn't be any awkward whatsoever. You sure you want to use that word awkward again? Yes. Yeah, you still okay? Still, <laughs> I'm, check, I'm gonna. I reckon I can probably. With it now. <laughs> I reckon we can probably change it by the I'm end of this chat. Down on that. We're just doubling down on that statement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Now, from what you were just saying then with, with, with Jam, I think it's, it's um, yeah. And it makes dance really accessible for people that may have danced when they were younger or they always wanted to dance when they were younger, but they never had the opportunity and they're now coming at it. And it's just, it makes dance accessible to so many people and allows you to have that feeling that, we get when we're in dance class and in performances and things like that. And yep. it's just, it's all those feelings that you get from within and allowing yourself just to release everything that needs to be releasing, which is kind of why balance and jam for me go hand in hand. It's just finding that release and that ability to express emotion, but just in completely different ways. I like hearing that. Yep. 
<laughs> you're not an awkward human at all. You know, you know what <laughs> you want. You know, you know what you want out of life. You know your your, as you said, you know what what's what's ticking your boxes. You know what's scratching your itches with that kind of stuff. And I think it's it's awesome. Yeah, I think there's we need more people like you out there. More people who understand why they're here and what they're here for. Yeah, and when you are one hundred percent you, it shines as we've said. Yeah, I, I still want to yeah. say, and I'm going to tell people, jump onto to Haley's um, Instagram, and I'm pretty sure you'll find the picture that I'm talking about that was taken at Les Mills Live in Melbourne, where you're on stage, your arms are up in in front of you. Well, I'm sure it's a a body balance pose of some sort, but the look on your face is. Absolute bliss, absolute in the moment, absolute knowing and controlling and commanding everybody in that room that was there with you, sharing that moment. And the look on your face just says so, so, so much. So much. I'm going to give a shout out to Kate here because she was a photographer and she's, um, she also knows what faces I make when I teach and she knows the right moments to capture that. So um, massive shout out to Kate for yep. uh all her work that she does with uh, photography um, with that Les Mills Live event. And then also she's always just at all our post workshops as well, just delivering the goods every single quarter, just from the bottom of the heart and just, yeah. Now that's the hashtag that's, uh, or her, her Insta handle is in the GF studio. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Guys, go and suss it out. Go and follow her. Go and let's blow it up. Let's let's get a whole lot of people on there. Yeah. Look out. If you're not already, let's just do it. Let's let's seriously send her some love because what she what she does for our industry as well, um, with those shots is She's just absolutely amazing. amazing and talented and yeah. I love her to bits. Yeah. Love it. Love and I hope it. she hears this and starts crying. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> We'll tell her she's gotta she's gotta listen to it. We'll tag her in tag her in it. So she's yeah. Love that. Yes. <laughs> now I'm gonna let's go down a serious path for a second. I want to know what you hate about our industry. What but what ticks you off? Um see this is a hard one because I'm just never really looking at the bad side of things. Yep. Um And they do be honest, think- there doesn't need to be anything. It doesn't need to be anything at all. I think representation is coming a long way, but it's not where it needs to be. And I think more specifically, um, representation of different body sizes and types. Yep. Um, One of the hardest things for me was when I first started um, teaching was I was in eating disorder recovery at the time and Every like I was learning how to sort of manage my triggers and how to avoid certain things. And one thing I couldn't avoid was every single three months I was getting DVDs at that point of um, people who are the pinnacle of fitness um, in in inverted quotes and never seeing any other representation of body types. And it was a really, really hard thing to keep going in this industry when you're being told that one sort of look is what's going to make you successful. Yep. And if you're not that, it's, it's just not good enough. Yep. And so um, it's definitely come a long way and it's definitely making progress, but it's still frustrating when you're seeing something and it's like there's one token plus size person and then everyone else is still the same body type. Yep. And yeah, it's almost like the representation and the diversity is tokenistic at this point and yep. it's still not moving towards a place where it's coming from a place that's real. Yeah. I think that's got a lot to do with the big corporates in the world um, that have product, yeah. product to sell um, that believe still – and, you know – been in this industry now since 2002 and if you back then even even probably for the first 10 years up until 2012 if you didn't look the part you you just got overlooked yeah you didn't didn't you know yeah, none sure. of that none of that was happening whatsoever you you never got an opportunity even as an instructor unless you were actually fit and you know ripped you were lucky to get classes because that was what even clubs back then wanted and expected you need to be 
the pinnacle of fitness, you need to be looking what society says you need to look like in order for us to yeah. be able to give you something a bit more. And I think you're right, the, the diversity angle is is slowly changing, but I think, as you said as well, and I agree with you, there's a there's a long way to go yet, a hell of a long way to go yet. Yeah. You know, there, there are changes that are being made. Um, we're seeing that on Masterclass Filming stuff that's coming through as well. We're yeah, seeing sure. more, more and more of it. But I think as an industry, I think the the industry has realised that the Fitzbo fit hashtag fit model fish whatever it is isn't what our industry really is you know and i think that to me yeah. to me this year when i went to the fitness show here in sydney was even more so uh apparent that what society thinks fitness is wasn't that that fitness show yeah, yeah. there were fake tits fake faces fake cans <laughs> fake fake asses fake lips fake fake everything and a whole lot of fake tan and a whole lot of protein alley. And that's what the majority of the people were there for. They weren't there to watch the group fitness displays or group exercise displays that were going on. They weren't there to talk to manufacturers about equipment. They were there to go through what they believe and what they've seen on social media of, oh, if I'm going to, if I'm going to be part of this industry, then I need to take my shirt off and pump up and have a look at this and I've got to show this or the girls have got to wear next to nothing and have the big booties and all that kind of stuff going on that, Instagram have said, yep, yeah, this is what you need to look like. Yeah. And it's hard because it's um, society reinforces that because that's what gets likes, that's what gets engagement. So un yep. unfortunately, that's where the driver for a lot of this is because at the end of the day, this industry is a business and yeah. businesses need to make money and they need to stay relevant. But yeah, it's, it's good to see things changing and hopefully just if we can keep that momentum rolling because that inspires some people and there's a place for that and that has its own, I think, space in the industry. But there's also people are inspired by people who look like them yep. and 100%. They, yeah, they can go, oh, I'm like that person and I want to be. Yeah. You know, like that. I want to be as strong as that, or as fit as that, or yep. you know. No, I think the. I'll be honest and say there's more. What I've noticed recently in classes that I've gone to and things that I've seen happening throughout gyms, where when you go and you participate in a class, you are seeing instructors that are engaging with not only the front row, engaging with the new member engaging with the member that is completely deconditioned, that is not fit, that's maybe walked yeah. into the gym for the first time. Um, and you, you're seeing more and more people with all different shapes, sizes, ages, race, whatever it may be, coming into classes. And I think that's – I want to be honest and say I think since what happened in 2019, 2000. 2020, the thing that we try not to talk about that's never coming that back to us again. Yeah, <laughs> you know that thing that happened three years ago. Um, since then, I think it, it opened up a lot of people's minds to what fitness is. Now we struggled to get people back into the gyms yeah. for a while, but I think the people that are coming back in are a different group of people. Are a different not demographic because that's probably not the right word to use, but they're a different. Um, people that have probably never been into a gym before that are realising, shit, hang on a second, I need to do something about this. I want to get fit. I want to do yeah. something. Their eyes were opened up to doing stuff online or seeing stuff online and, and, and the whole awareness about being fit and mental health and all of that kind of stuff. Now that those people are starting to come into gyms, instructors have had to teach differently. Instructors have had to engage differently. But I think there's that, as we were talking about the whole diversity thing, you've got to realise realize and, and really teach to who is in front of you. Yeah, and particularly now, like people aren't just coming to the gym because you just just mentioned like the mental health aspect of it. That getting fit or losing weight isn't the reason why everyone's going to the gym anymore. It's because they want to feel better and they want that feeling of being strong, or they want just that mental health relief or that space to socialize with other people. It's, there's so much more that exercise is offering us these days and yep. yeah as instructors we do have to adapt to that as well with the way that we coach the way that we approach our teaching because it's not just the physical aspect yeah anymore yeah we can all we all we can all know or we all know how to teach 
what we've got to get across. But if you're not connecting, they're not coming back. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and you know, let's be honest, we all know that those newbies that come into a class, unless they engage with you really in the first couple of minutes, they'll hang around for the rest of the class, but they won't come back. Yeah. One yeah. thing that I'll say to a lot of instructors, if you see a newbie, go and say good day. Don't just focus on your current members that you know week in, week out. Yeah, say good day to those guys because they're important as well. But that person that you've never seen in the back row or that person that you've never seen that's over to the side, go and say good day. Be awkward. <laughs> <laughs> and more importantly as well, um, I find the more impactful thing is catching up with the master class as well yeah. and reassuring them and supporting them and just letting them know they did a really good job. Yeah. Um, so that when they walk away, because often you, especially when you're brand new to something, you walk away feeling like you're just kind of stuffed at that and you feel defeated. And sometimes you just felt like everyone else knows what they're doing. And so just that reassurance of like actually did pretty damn good. Yeah. Um, can just make such a difference. This is the Group X Podcast. Matt, I'm going to ask you one final question. And. It's it's a bit of advice that you would give to any instructor that's listening at the moment. You know, if there's any bit of advice, what would it be, whether it's for them to improve on something or what would you say to someone? Um, probably just don't doubt the power of being yourself when you're on stage. Like if people can't vibe with that, that's fine. They're the members that you don't want in your class anyway. So it's fine that not everyone likes you. Yep. Um, but the people that do, they all keep coming back for you and the freedom that you have when you teach from that place of just being completely yourself is the most freeing thing and just the most fulfilling thing. So, yeah, never be afraid of the power of just owning who you are and being that person on stage. Love it. Hayley, thank you for coming on and being awkward with me. And uh, having a chat. <laughs> Thanks for my awkwardness. <laughs> you are far from awkward. I still haven't found the right word that I would use to describe you, but mate, it is definitely not awkward. You are, you know your stuff, yeah. You know who you are, and um, I know this has probably been a challenge for you to come on and, and chat. Mutually exclusive. You can know stuff and still just be a fucking weirdo half the time. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> You know what? If you if we we'll, we'll roll with awkward then, and you are you are uniquely you, and we'll we'll just go yeah, good o. But no, mate. Seriously, thank you so much for coming on. As I said, I know it was it could have been a bit tough for you to come on and have a chat to someone you've never met before. But mate, I think we nailed it. I think we've done all right with this. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Um, yeah, letting me talk shit for the last hour or so. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing before you head out, help us spread the word. Take a minute to rate and review the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel or share this episode with a friend. And if you like the conversations, you'll love the Group X newsletter. We send it out every Friday. The link is in the description. Thanks again for listening and we'll see you back here next week.